Hi, I'm Canty Worley. We're here at Bart and Lynn Pewitt's house on beautiful Satula Mountain in Highlands, North Carolina. This is a house that's been under construction for a few years now, and we've been working on the view here. Uh, this is the project of the great local architect, Jeffrey Owens, and this is probably going to be his masterwork, so I'm really proud to be a part of this. Um, we've had the joy of coming in on this site from early on, working with the trees uh, over a good period of time, taking nibbles from the view and not taking too much at once. And we're at a point now where we're able to make some pretty good breakthroughs, see the mountains we want to see while maintaining the trees we love so much. So, let's go to work. Okay, so we're moving on to another tree. There's always another tree in the view. This nice oak here has some sprouts we're gonna take off of the trunk. And you may have wondered how we're getting into this tree without using spikes, as I mentioned before. Where we're using a neat product is called the Big Shot. And essentially, it's a big slingshot on fiberglass poles. And we're gonna put these two poles together and we're gonna connect to give us really good strength to pull this nice thick rubber down and get some good speed. So, by great little interlocking clips, these pieces come together and give us the big shot. Now, what we use with the big shot is a throw ball. This is a weighted throw ball. This has a bunch of lead beads inside of it. This is a nice canvas tough bag. We've connected this throw ball to some running throw line. We're going to shoot the throw ball into the tree, hopefully at the desired branch. And when it comes back down, we'll be able to connect that climbing rope to it, pull it back over that same branch, and off to work we'll go. So, we get the throw ball in this leather pouch with the slingshot. And then, we're going to use the center of the slingshot to take aim. Hopefully find a good branch up there that we can get our line over. Steady as she goes, and we fell a little short, so we're going to have to do it again. So if you can see, our throw ball is up there sort of swinging around. It's below the branch that I wanted to get, okay? So we're going to have to shoot that thing a little bit harder and a little bit higher. Now, this is an important moment. You don't want to get your throw ball stuck up in this branch, because then you've got a second job to do, and that's getting your throw ball back. So I'm going to just easily bring it over. Send it back down to me. And we're going to have to wind up all this string now, the other fun part of using the throw on. Okay, we got the branch we wanted. It's hung on a couple of little small branches, but I don't mind. Okay, now we've isolated the branch, so we're going to let our throw, throw ball and throw line down. Hopefully on a clear shot through the branches, because that's what our climbing rope is going to go through. After we get our ball down to the base of the tree, we can then hook our climbing rope to this throw line and pull the climbing rope over the branch that we've isolated, and then that gives us a nice safe climbing rope to work on while we're doing this tree work. Ready to go. So in this technique we use a double rope technique. We have an end of the rope 
and we have a running rope and we're going to connect it in a way that allows us to use the rope which is over the high limbs of the trees I'm going to be able to hoist myself up as the rope moves along Use a split tail system. Essentially just a small rope that I'm going to wrap around the larger rope to serve as a hitch or a break that will hold me as I sit down into the rope. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. My little mental checker to make sure I've tied my hitch properly. My hitch is what's going to hold me up on this rope, so I want to make sure it's done right. I have a micro pulley, which is just a small pulley that's going to help advance my rope and my hitch as I go up. The hitch lets me sit into the rope, but when I adjust the tightness of it, it'll also let me slide down the rope as well. The cam that I put on my foot is going to be an aid that takes a bite on the rope as I advance the hitch. The rope will still move fluidly through the cam, and I will go up higher. I take it out at any time and come back down the road. One of the reasons we want to take our time with this type of pruning is that we have a beautiful understory in this area. Cinnamon fern, cinnamon bark clethra, a whole myriad of different native plants and wildflowers live in this ecosystem. When we take out trees, we allow for light and we allow for these plants to do better. If we're careful with our understory, it will be here for us when the job is finished. So a lot of guys might use spikes and spike into the tree. It injures the tree in a million different places. By climbing rope, we're protecting the tree and we're actually making a more efficient use of our movements rather than jamming into the tree every time. We're just climbing rope.
Now I could have climbed from down at the bottom of the trunk, but that was so much more fun to walk these gentle little mountain saplings up to where I'm going from up the hillside. I also used a lot less energy than I would have had I climbed the tree from the bottom of the hill. So it's all about having fun. It's all about keeping your body fit. And it's all about not being too fatigued by the time you get up there to do the work. Now from up at the deck, this might look like a tiny tree with a little bit of foliage in the view. But as you see, I'm in a massive old growth oak, a beautiful part of Satula Mountain, and I want to treat this tree with respect. I need to get the view, but there's ways I can prune this tree so that I get the view, maintain the health of the tree, not leave the tree deformed or, or hacked off when I get finished. Tree and I can go forward feeling good about each other. At least I hope. I start to find a line of sight with the deck, with the view horizon as I know it from there. And then I can determine exactly which branches I need to cut. I'm gonna start small. I'm gonna take little bits out of the center and see what else I can see. I'm gonna take little bits, get out of this tree, even though it was a long way up here, go back up to the deck, look at it again, take my time with it, nibble on this tree, continue to respect it. By using a high tie-in point on my tree, it allows me to swing over to various parts of this wide spreading tree to get to the branches I need to work on. If you remember my friendly little trees that helped me on my way back up, they're helping me here on my way back down. Voila. <laughs> this is Lalo Lopez. He has been with me on so many of these tree jobs, you wouldn't believe it. He's watched me do all this stuff I do in the tree, but I couldn't do it without him. So he's my ground man, he's my brother, he's my friend, and together, we do this safely and efficiently, and we get some good work done in the process, yeah? Yeah, I know. All right, thank you. Okay, so we're back here at the view. It's winter time now. We can really see 
what the trees look like without their leaves. We can see more of the view. This is what helps us to do the view in the summer. We want to know what the structure of these trees is going to look like afterwards. We have some great mountains in these views. These are our local mountains. Short off mountain. Uh, there's falling off to the right. And as we pan over, we're kind of going over highlands, but you don't really see highlands down there. We've left enough trees that we're making the view be about the mountains. And as we wind our way across, we're going to get through some trees that we've decided to leave. We, we want to have the structure of that oak in the view. We want to know that it's part of the scene, it's part of the picture. And as we've made our way over, we've carved out just a little window through these two trees. This is the main entry of the house and, and has a big window here. And it's not the main shot of view, I don't think, but it's a little glimpse of the view to come once you, once you explore out on the house a little more. So what we don't want is for the trees in the winter to look as though they have their heads chopped off and their canopies chopped off. We've tried to leave a lot of natural branching in the trees so that we have a natural look all year round. This is a view that's going to be enjoyed uh, from January to December, so we want to make it count at those times. Um, as we pan over, we're getting into the, the real main thrust of the view, and that's Whiteside Mountain, of course. Although we have a joy in this is that we also get Sunset Rock in this view. It's rare to see both of those two together, and the prime position of this house is what's going to give us that view. And Whiteside really is sort of the crown jewel of the view. But to me it's a crown jewel because we stand here on the precipice of the Blue Ridge Mountains. As we look to the north, the whole range of the Appalachian Mountains lays out before us. We look over Cashers and see Chimney Top Mountain and Rock Mountain. As we look over Horse Cove, we see our old familiar Black Rock and Terrapin Mountains. But what we have is the whole expanse of the Appalachian Mountains laid out before us. And we're just here at the tip of it, and we get to enjoy these. But in this view, we get the long-range shots as well, and that's what really makes this a great view. So as we've worked this view, we've worked from the left to the right, and we've made our way over here to Ravenel Ridge and all of South Carolina below us. Um, on a more clear day, we might see the lakes and even Clemson University out there. Um, once again, we're at this precipice where the Blue Ridge Mountains drops off into the Piedmont and eventually into the coastal plains. It's, it's all encompassing from up here and uh, you really get a glimpse of it. But you get a glimpse of it through the canopy. We haven't taken out all of the trees. We've carved out little windows like that great part of Ravenel Ridge that you see there with its rock face and unique ecosystem. Hopefully if we see and protect these places, they'll be here for many years to come. Well, I'm really glad you could join us for this. Um, this is a unique view. It's not one that we do every day by any means. This is probably one of the nicest views I've ever worked on, and I'm really glad to be able to be here. I'm glad to have been able to take the time that I needed to do this work. Um, a lot of home sites will be cleared before anything else happens, and all the great trees will be removed. There was a lot of forethought in this project when it came to excavation. We like to say, think preservation before excavation. And that means these big beautiful trees you see behind us get a chance to stay. This view was designed so that we look through the trees, the trees are part of the view, and the trees enhance the view. If it were all just sky and mountains, that would be so one-dimensional. This gives us a great way to see and appreciate the trees that are close to us, the trees that are halfway far away from us, and those that are in the distance. Um, we wanted to do this view with a lot of thought to the individual mountains, but in terms of framing those mountains. And the trees become a vital component of that. The trees are the frame to this living portrait that we're generating here. And that's what we want to carry forward. And those trees are going to grow back. We're going to get to come back and visit them again and again, I do hope. And that's part of the process as well. This is not a one-time thing. We have to return to these trees. We have to make sure the trees are staying healthy. We have to make sure the trees are staying properly pruned and that the view is maintained as well as the tree canopy. So it's really been a pleasure and I hope you've enjoyed what we've done here. Thank you.